Hey everyone, happy kickoff. This is Brad from Rev and I'm joined today by Kevin from our mechanical engineering team to discuss the 2025 Rev Ion FRC starter bot for the Reefscape Reef season. season. All right, Kevin, well, let's get right into it. Now, starting off, let's talk a little bit about the game. We, we have some different objectives. We have the algae, this really large ball, and the coral. Um, what was kind of the plan with starter bot, and what was the direction you guys had to, to deal with these elements? Right. This year, there being two game elements, and them being so drastically different in shape, size, texture, mm. and stuff like that, made the engineering team really consider whether we should have two separate subsystems. And so uh, a couple of the main objectives that we were trying to solve is level one, level two, and level three scoring on the reef, as well as being able to manipulate the algae from the floor and score it, as well as giving teams an option to also knock it off in the event that they're really trying to help their team and help with cycles and stuff like that. Awesome. Okay, so let's, let's talk a bit about, like, in terms of the game, we're kind of on our own field for the most part. And in order to maneuver around all these things, we, we start with our drivetrain, obviously. And for Starter Bot this year, we decided to go with Max Swerve. And so can you right. tell me a bit about that decision and, and what that enabled you guys to do? Right. And so uh, with drivetrains and robots in general, packaging becomes a really important thing that teams have to solve around. And so this year, we wanted to be able to fit our our elevator mechanism and our ball intake mechanism on one chassis make it really seamless integration wise and so Max Swerve let us do that because of its really nice packaging and the maneuverability that it gives us to navigate around the reef because it's pretty hard to align yourself well with without with other options and so yeah, we, yeah we, that multifaceted right. reef structure would be really difficult and right. the swerve really allowed the elevator just to line up every time it yeah. was really impressive it's really nice and from there we go on to algae manipulation right and um, that's primarily on the ground to to intake what what is that intake and, and kind of how did you come up with that Right, and it's a pretty interesting solution to what is essentially a problem of picking up a game piece, controlling it, and getting it to somewhere. And so we want to, to create a solution that is typically known as a slap down ball intake. Um, in this case, where the algae rolls around on the floor, it sometimes can be unpredictable where it goes. And so we wanted teams to be able to drive around and feel confident in intake pivoting down, rollers spinning, and it coming up into the robot and it's held within the robot chassis and stuff like that. And so in order to implement this, we wanted a drop-in solution. So we're using the pillow blocks to let us have a nice pivot, but also using a really unique packaging with some max spline, some gears, as well as the motor that's pivoting the actual intake mounted to the intake arm itself. Yeah, I noticed that. That's really clever. And so you could, you could in theory, shift that around to yep. adjust it, uh, depending on your bumper height or what have you. Exactly. Um, and, and repairability, you can just remove that whole yep. section if you really wanted to. And, and the other thing I noticed about the system is that, um, you know, it folds up because we right. now have the, the perimeter rules of, of the robot. And so that was a consideration, I assume, to make sure that it can fold up, saving enough space, but then mm -hmm. deploy without going too far. Exactly, exactly. We wanted to give teams the robustness of having an intake that can handle the robot on robot contact and survive it, while also being able to extend far enough and really grab game pieces with a with ease. So, so going on to the next section of the robot that really stands out is the elevator. So um, we have an elevation system, and why did we choose an elevator in this case? Right. So it really does stand out. The elevator is the, the superstructure that keeps, get, keeps your eye on the starter bot. And so the reason why we chose the elevator is because we wanted to allow teams to have a really straightforward solution to gaining elevation for this game. And so the max lift elevator system has been really useful in terms of packaging, keeping that really compact, keeping everything on pitch. Um, the whole spacing of our elevator all lines up, and so it lets bracketry happen really nicely, as you'll see in our implementation of the chain run that lifts the single stage elevator. This lets us mount our intake arm and, and elevate it to different scoring locations as well as lining it up for the human player station. Yeah, and, and the use, I guess, of those max lift end blocks were nice because you, you could use thicker tubes, thinner tubes, change it up, and, and some adaptability there right. in, in the choice of using those. Um, and then, so we come up to our elevation, 
And now we have uh, effectively our arm, which is pivoting back and forth. Right. And this is what's controlling and grabbing our coral and, and, and scoring. What was this decision? Why did we go with this? And, and kind of how does it work? Okay. So what we wanted to show teams is the importance of cycle times and how it's going to really impact your performance this season, give teams ideas on how they can minimize that time of robot from your game piece pickup area to the scoring location. And so an overswinging arm came to mind and with a really robust touch it, own it intake from the human player station, the arm swings over and scores on the wreath. And if you notice, we have some really neat RT25 belt packaging. Um, it lets us fit inside our max tube and it reduces the overall width of the intake and maximizes the, the functional width where we can actually manipulate game mm -hmm. piece objects. We're using compliant wheels to give a good amount of compression. It's designed to be about half an inch of compression. We found that to be really well in terms of game piece storage and moving around the field, handling all the shock loads and a stuff a like and that. And, the, and those intakes, are they kind of fast, kind of slow? Is there a, a, and the wheel sizes are also different. Can right. you tell us about that? Right. So that, that's pretty interesting that we found in our testing. They're, they're pretty fast wheels, but also the wheels being uh, different sizes lets the surface speeds of the wheels be different. And when we swing over to score, the bottom wheel is larger diameter than the top wheel, and it lets the surface speed on the bottom of the, the coral be higher, tilting it up slightly, counteracting the gravity that would otherwise make our scoring um, unpredictable. And so we have better alignment with the actual reef with that situation. Okay, and, and with that overswinging arm, controlling the coral, swinging over to score, then we have the ele elevator lifting it up, and we're able to essentially drop down to L1, but focus on L2, L3. Right. Um, is L4 possible? So L4 wasn't within our design considerations when designing Starbot. There was some fun we had with driving, and it is possible in a very articulated team who can manage that driving. But no, not with Starbot as currently is, and we implore that teams really look into creative solutions on pushing it to the next level. And speaking of pushing it to the next level, what would be kind of the next step if you were to evolve StarterBot and, and add more additions? What would you do to improve it? Right, one of the big considerations we wanted was adaptability, and modularity, and upgradability for teams. And so uh, a couple of ideas that we could we thought of is adding a second stage to make sure you get that level four really easily and then adding a deeper reduction on the elevator. And so maybe potentially teams could hang, adding static hooks on the elevator so teams can hang on the shallow uh, cages and stuff like that. All are good options in terms and of what we can do. It'd be pretty easy to add like a second motor to that too in theory. Right, and right. so you'd have that power to really like lift the robot up if you wanted to and, and attempt those those deep and shallow hangs potentially. Right, right. The max tube rails with the max pattern really help mount motor mounting and so it's been it's been it's been really nice working with it. All right, well Kevin, well you the engineering team at Rev has done a fantastic job with Starterbot. We look forward to more. Um, if you're looking for the CAD or more resources, you can always check it out at docs.revrobotics.com. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it on this video and we can always ask Kevin. Um, but you can also reach out to us at support at revrobotics.com. Thank you so much and good luck in your season. season? The Reefscape, Reefscape season. season. <laughs>